In Indonesia tonight, threats of another eruption and tsunami after a wave of destruction this weekend killed hundreds. 2018, a year of seemingly back to back to back global natural disasters. Just named the fourth costliest year ever when calculating insured losses. In overall economic loss, $155 billion. From the record-setting wildfires in California, more than 22,000 homes destroyed, 100 people killed, to Hawaii's volcano, a billion dollars in damage, to the strongest hurricane in 26 years. I'm Kerry Sanders. Hurricane Michael, 155 mile per hour winds, making landfall in Mexico Beach. Now the new climate change report just released. 13 federal agencies ramping up urgent warnings of a severe threat to America's health and economy. And I have been enormously impressed by Pope Francis. We have got to ingrain moral principles into our economy. And there is no area where that is clearer than in the area of climate change. Sears deadly wildfires and monster storms terrifying signs of things to come. According to tonight's dire new assessment from 13 federal agencies, government scientists warning the impacts of climate change are intensifying. Climate related threats to Americans' physical, social and economic well-being are rising from coast to coast. I'm not denying climate change, but it could very well go back. But the administration's own scientists now say significant immediate action is required to avoid substantial damages to the U.S. economy, environment, and human health. Among their alarming predictions, for the Southeast, stronger hurricanes and more frequent flooding. For the Midwest, an agricultural catastrophe, extreme heat destroying crops, 10% of the country's gross domestic product gone by the end of the century, hundreds of billions of dollars lost, and in the West, fire dangers exploding. We're in extreme climate change right now. We're doing all that we can to prevent incidents and mitigate incidents and save lives. And even though Donald Trump announced that he was going to pull out of the Paris Agreement, the very next day the entire rest of the world doubled down on their commitment and here governors and mayors and business people like Mayor Bloomberg for Mayor, yeah, Mayor, Mayor Bloomberg did a great they job uh, something governor at the Jerry local Brown level and Governor Cuomo here in New York uh, and it now looks as if the US has an excellent chance to meet our commitments under the Paris Agreement regardless of President Trump. Forbes magazine and American Business magazine asked the following, can the Pope's Vatican redesign our economy? What a question. Can the Pope's Vatican redesign the American economy? How does this relate to the mark of the beast? The beast is the papacy as we've already discussed and they tell us that their mark of authority is changing the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. And furthermore, the Bible says plainly that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark, Revelation 13, 17. Also, that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed, Revelation 13, 15. And here we have the Vatican waiting in the wings to redesign the American economy. Can it happen? Pope Francis on Thursday urged the downtrodden to change the world economic order. And I have been enormously impressed by Pope Francis who are trying to do our best to create a moral uh, economy. Let's put some pieces together here. In 2015, Pope Francis put together an encyclical called Laudato Si, which means praise be in English. The encyclical had to do with numerous things, particularly the climate, but furthermore the economy and also Sunday as part of the solution to fix the climate issue. These issues were layered throughout the encyclical. From Pope Francis's climate encyclical, we read the following, quote, on Sunday, our participation in the Eucharist has special importance. Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day which heals our relationship with God, with ourselves, with others, and with the world, and motivates us to greater concern for nature and the poor. Laudato Si, page 237. Sunday, he says, motivates us for a greater concern for nature and the poor. The Vatican seems to concern itself with the poor, and that's what this is probably about, controlling the economy. 
As this article talks about, when addressing the European Union, the bishops expressed their support for a sustainable financial system in Europe and the Church. Just as Emmanuel Macron. Recently, Macron was asking the bishops for wisdom. And what is the wisdom they are offering? The bishops recently published a paper called Shaping the Future of Work. And this article said, quote, we therefore remain strongly committed to its objective of reintegrating the Sunday as a synchronized day of rest in European law, page 22. The goal is obvious and they've stated their goal plainly. So Macron and the European Union need wisdom. It further states on the same page, quote, reinstating Sunday as a weekly day of rest in a revised European working time directive will therefore prove that the EU is more than just a union of economic interest, page 22. And there's that word economy again. Yep, the mark of papal authority Sunday seems to have a lot to do with future law respecting buying and selling. It's coming. No man might buy or sell except that he has the mark. The document is 40 pages long and has 17 policy recommendations for the future of work at the end of the document, one of which is Sunday laws. Quote, reintegrate Sunday protection into EU law, whereas EU citizens are increasingly faced with work on public holidays and Sundays. We recommend that the EU protect Sunday in a revised working time directive as a collective day of rest, page 34. Furthermore, recently we read the following. The Pope tells participants a human-centric economy is a moral imperative as 48th World Economic Forum annual meeting gets underway. Notice it's a human-centered economy. It surely won't be God-centered. But furthermore, consider the following. Revelation 13, 17, and 18 says that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here's wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. The word a is an added word in the text. It should read the number of man or the number of humanity. And that is exactly what this has to do with. No human will be able to buy or sell if they refuse the mark, name, or number of the beach, which all, according to the verse, are the same thing. Name represents character, and the number is 666, which is the number of humanity without God. 777 is the name or character, and also the day of worship for God's people. The sevens in the forehead symbolize the mark of God's rest, while 666 indicates the lack of rest and the missing rest day. Six days of labor works, 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 and no rest in those who receive the mark of the beast. That is why we read in the next chapter that they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name, Revelation 14:11. You're missing God's rest day, and the next verse makes it clear by telling us, verse 12, here is the patience of the saints, here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And obviously those commandments would include the Sabbath, which was written in stone. And this is the reason that God's children don't have 666 written in their forehead. They truly do rest from their labors, both spiritually and physically, on the seventh day. But it is clear that laws of the land will be made enforcing the mark of the papacy and declaring that those who refuse will not be able to buy or sell, but finally that they should be killed. We had Sunday laws already being made in Poland recently, and this was only the start of much more to come. This is the human-centric economy that Pope Francis is calling a moral imperative, and it is right along with the climate agenda and Sunday laws. In 2015, shortly after the environmental encyclical was made by Pope Francis, he made a visit to the United States of America and spoke before the lawmaking assembly called Congress, saying that he was there to heal wounds and that we need to be especially on guard for fundamentalists. We must be especially attentive to every type of fundamentalism, whether religious, or of any other kind. The contemporary world, with its open wounds, which affect so many of our brothers and sisters, demands that we confront every form of polarization, which, which would divide it into 
these two camps. Remember from part three, we learned that a fundamentalist is a Bible-believing Christian? Following his visit to Congress, he was in New York City. The next day, addressing the United Nations at a long-awaited event and where Pope Francis gave a speech on how to combat poverty with a new economic order that resulted in the Paris Climate Agreement being signed only six months later. The Paris Climate Accord is also called the Sustainable Development Agenda, which for years had been called Agenda 21 until that title began to get a bad rap. But as you can see, the United Nations, a foreign government, has mapped out the United States and the agenda includes moving people out of the yellow and red zones, making them off limit to humans to a large degree in order to save the birds, they say and furthermore, moving people into cities. I believe at this time that God's message is the opposite of this Babylonian message, and God is calling his people to come out of the cities. But as part of this agenda, the United Nations also has a Sabbath. Sunday. Some churches are getting on board with this agenda, such as the Salvation Army. You'll notice what they deem climate justice. You know, justice includes law and order, and justice is something that the government is to enforce. But notice how they believe we can enforce justice. It says, keep the Sabbath. It could be the most radical thing a church can do for environmental stewardship. To commit to keeping the Sabbath, the scriptures make constant reference to rest and care for the land as well as for the people on the Sabbath. Spending time with family and friends and enjoying the free outdoors is an act of resistance to the pressure of materialism and consumerism. And of course they bring up materialism and consumerism. Why do they always connect their agenda to the economy and buying and selling? Because Sunday laws are about controlling the issue of buying and selling. And the moral law of the Catholic Church is to be enforced, which includes Sunday keeping. And we don't know when the next financial crisis is coming. Some are saying it could be this year, but really who knows? What we do know though is that Ben Bernanke, the former chairman of the Federal Reserve, has told us that unlike in 2008, the US has no system in place to deal with another financial meltdown. And many are connecting the next financial crash to climate change. Donald Trump said that America was exiting the Paris Climate Accord by 2020. Trump insisted the Paris Agreement was bad for business and bad for the US economy. Major economic wound. But the problem is that it doesn't matter what he says or does if all the states and cities are still taking actions to fulfill the deal. And even though Donald Trump announced that he was going to pull out of the Paris Agreement, the very next day the entire rest of the world doubled down on their commitment and here governors and mayors and business people like Mayor Bloomberg for Mayor, yeah, Mayor, Mayor Bloomberg did a great they job uh, something Governor at the Jerry local Brown level and Governor Cuomo here in New York uh, and it now looks as if the US has an excellent chance to meet our commitments under the Paris Agreement regardless of President Trump. In a statement Obama said even in the absence of American leadership even as this administration joins a small handful of nations that reject the future I'm confident that our states cities and businesses will step up and do even more to lead the way. Furthermore Trump also said he left the climate deal open for renegotiation. But Trump also left the door open to renegotiating the agreement or striking an entirely new climate deal. We'll sit down with the Democrats and all of the people that represent either the Paris Accord or something that we can do that's much better than the Paris Accord. Yet him even saying that they are out of the Paris climate deal seems only to infuriate more action by mayors and governors. And certainly some of the science doesn't seem very reliable on the issue. And it is even believed by many that many of these disasters are intentionally made in order to bring about the agenda. However, the expense of these disasters is devastating the economy and it isn't something Trump is going to overlook. In Northern California, the campfire has grown even more deadly. The car fire near Redding, now 20,000 acres. Near Yosemite, the Ferguson fire charring more than 43,000 acres. Parts of that park still closed. Down in Southern California, two major wildfires, the Hill Fire and the Woolsey Fire, just miles from one another. Based on where we're going with temperatures because of increasing greenhouse gases, we're going to have drier and drier summers. I can't see the situation getting better. If anything, it's going to get worse. So 
Floods, hurricanes, and wildfires cost the world nearly $85 billion in 2018. According to a study by the charity Christian Aid, Hurricane Florence tops the list of most expensive weather events at $17 billion. Hurricane Michael came in second with $15 billion in damages, and California's Camp Fire cost about $10 billion. Insisting his decision was driven by economic factors rather than his view of global warming. This agreement is less about the climate. Insisting his decision was driven by economic factors rather than his view of global warming. This agreement is less about the climate. And more about other countries gaining a financial advantage. He may be denying it now, but the continued disasters and the effects on the economy may eventually be a catalyst to Trump changing his mind on the issue. Remember, nothing he says can be done until 2020, and even then the states can still revolt and fulfill the deal. Perhaps he might even maintain his course on this issue. It doesn't matter either way. And even though Donald Trump announced that he was going to pull out of the Paris Agreement, the very next day the entire rest of the world doubled down on their commitment. Nancy Pelosi has said that Trump dishonored God by walking away from the Paris Accord that we had a moral responsibility to be good stewards of God's creation. And in doing so, we must pay special attention to the needs of the poor. Well, they saw it as an environmental justice issue as well, the evangelical community. When the Pope went to the White House, he talked about the dangers of air pollution when he was here. And just last week, the Pope met with President Trump and gave him a copy of his encyclical, Laudate Si, which made the case for strong, urgent action to halt the climate crisis. The Pope wrote, the climate is a common good belonging to all and meant for all. The Bible tells us that to minister to the needs of God's creation is an act of worship. To ignore those needs is to dishonor the God who made us. And that is just what we're doing by walking away from this accord. Some of the most expensive disasters in history have occurred over the last few years. Hurricane Harvey, some are saying, was the most expensive disaster. And right after this disaster, the evangelicals were calling for a national day of prayer. These advisors asked Trump and Trump signed an executive order making that Sunday a national day of prayer. We're going to be signing a day of prayer and that'll be on Sunday. It'll be a very special day. and. I don't know when this was done last, but it's been a long time ago. Is that a correct statement? It's been a long time ago. So as we can see, these disasters are certainly going to play into the hands of Sunday laws either way. It's interesting as well that there is a new movement sweeping America which is called the Sunrise Movement. They describe themselves as a movement of young people uniting to stop the climate crisis. We can argue about climate change all day long, but we can't ignore the fact that hurricanes, wildfires, tornadoes, earthquakes are becoming more and more frequent. But you'll notice it's a sunrise movement and the sun has something to do with this, but the day of the sun is something we need to consider Sunday. You see, it is definitely a sunrise movement. In fact, Pope Francis has gained a following in countries such as India, where Francis will be visiting very soon. In 2018, Emmanuel Macron of France visited India and it has been one of the ringleaders in the climate movement. The hope of preserving future generations from the scourge of war, building a new world or order based on law and keeping good on our word, making progress towards economic and social as well as mor moral order. We talked about France and Macron in part three. Now in an article entitled India co-hosts the first solar alliance meet, it apparently was attended by 21 heads of state and heads of government, several top ministers and bureaucrats, apart from participants from multilateral banks and the United Nations. In the article, quoting external affairs minister Sushma Swaraj from the same article we read, Swaraj used five Sanskrit names for the sun god while speaking of India's push for solar energy. I would like to bow before the sun god and address him by five different names in Sanskrit. 
and the names are listed there. This means, O oh Sun God, we bow before you. You illuminate the external and the internal world and you are the best to be adored and worshipped. May you bless us, she said with folded hands. The climate agenda is an issue of worship. As many as would not worship, the image of the beast should be killed. And it is to be a worldwide issue. It's about worship of the God of Sunday, the sun God. Even if you look into Pope Francis' environmental encyclical, it is taken from St. Francis of Assisi's medieval Italian prayer called Canticle of the Sun, which praises God through elements of creation like Brother Sun, Sister Moon, and our Mother Earth. Francis of Assisi was a pantheist, and Pope Francis' encyclical has pantheistic language throughout the entire encyclical, and it all comes back to sun worship on Sunday. Notice the following quote from Great Controversy. We were told of these disasters and how they would become more frequent. And this was written over 120 years ago. But we were also told what would be the final result. Notice carefully what it says. While appearing to the children of men as a great physician who can heal all their maladies, he will bring disease and disaster until populous cities are reduced to ruin and desolation. In fierce tornadoes and terrific hailstorms, in tempests, floods, cyclones, tidal waves, and earthquakes in every place and in a thousand forms, Satan is exercising his power. He sweeps away the ripening harvest and the famine and distress follow. He imparts to the air a deadly taint and thousands perish by the pestilence. These visitations are to become more and more frequent and disastrous. And then the great deceiver will persuade men that those who serve God are causing these evils. The class that have provoked the displeasure of heaven will charge all their troubles upon those whose obedience to God's commandments is a perpetual reproof to transgressors. It will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath, that this sin has brought calamities which will not cease until Sunday observance shall be strictly enforced. Great Controversy, page 589 and 590. Notice the following video where this woman uses the exact same words that we just read. For the first time during the Trump administration, this sweeping federal government report required by Congress on climate change is being made public and it lays out dire predictions about how people and prosperity could be threatened by more frequent and more devastating natural disasters. That it would be more frequent and more disastrous and it is threatening prosperity or the economy. And exactly what that means, that it is threatening the economy. And so what is the solution? It will be declared that men are offending God by violating the Sunday Sabbath, and that Sunday observance needs to be strictly enforced in order to bring back temporal prosperity. We are told that it is Satan working through the elements, and I believe he is working through some to bring about the ultimate desired issue that is strictly enforced Sunday observance. As disasters are occurring around us more frequently, the cry of the people becomes, we need to turn back to God. Spiritual manifestations have become more and more frequent. Evil angels working through Hollywood and also in the churches, they're manifesting through many of the religious leaders and they will imitate God's holy angels and they will call for a turning back to God's law in America and abroad. However, these spirits speak not according to this word, and this law will include a Sunday law. If the devil and his angels are after anyone, they want the leaders of the world and the leaders of the churches. Revelation 16, 13 and 14 says, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, for they are spirits of devils, working miracles which go forth to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. For those who truly desire to learn and understand these issues much more as they are coming to pass, press the like button and be sure to subscribe, but take a look under the video for links to Bible studies on these issues. It's not enough to just hear and see these things. We are to become fluent in teaching these things. God will teach us how to expound these things, and it doesn't take long if we are sincere. Don't be among those who are sitting in the pew for years hearing but never learning, and never going out to do something to get these messages out. These messages are vital right now. Lives will be dependent on each one of us, and you can bet that as you begin this warfare that legions of armies will be enlisted against you. 
So don't count it a strange thing if persecution comes or if everyone is not your friend. Press on without complaining, trusting and allowing your faith to increase and recognizing that Jesus told you all these things before they come to pass. If the world hated him, it will surely hate you, but don't be discouraged. Time is shorter than it ever was. The final warning is being given and time is running out. Please be sure to like, subscribe and share these messages far and wide. All right, well, we begin this morning with a new and disturbing report on the effects of global climate change. A long-awaited report called the National Climate Assessment was released Friday. It paints a dire picture warning that the Earth's climate is changing rapidly, primarily due to human activity. The report was compiled by more than a dozen federal agencies and mandated by Congress. It finds climate change is already causing more frequent and severe storms, floods, wildfires and tornadoes. All of it totaling nearly $400 billion worth of damage in just the last three years.